Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. 298 baby, 298. Can you feel it? Can you feel the epic wonderness that's gonna be 300? Am I blowing it up a little too much? I don't know, I'm excited. And I have almost another month before I'm actually going to be doing this episode 300. Um, I know when you watch this, it's only gonna be like another week until it's happening, it's next Monday. Uh, cause this should be Monday, the 21st episode. Um, I'm, I've been, I've been looking forward to this for months, honestly. Anyway, so, uh, again, links. Okay. So right here should be the, which one are you gonna do first? We'll do the Justin TV first. It's Justin TV. Okay. Wait a few seconds so you can see it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then the Eventbrite, if you're going to be in town and going to Max's wine dive, okay. To watch it. If you're my Facebook friend, and you were my friend prior to like mid-March or whatever. You got an invite through Facebook. Don't just say you're going on that. Also my personal account, not just my wine account. Um, so, so some of you got two invites. But anyway, click that. It's cool if you're gonna click you're going, but if you're gonna be in the audience, you have to register on Eventbrite. Not that you have to, it's just I need a guest count for Max's. That way they can staff it properly. If I tell them I'm gonna have 20 people and 40 show up, then we're gonna be short. If I, if 40 people, if I went off of Facebook and 40 people show up and 10, I'm sorry, 40 people say they're gonna show up because they're going via Facebook and like 10 people show up, then they had a server come in for no reason and they wasted wine and all that other stuff. So anyway, so April 28th. All the details are at those links below. All right, so let's get into the very next wine. So this is a wine I bought today on the 31st of March. Uh, went to World Market and here's my receipts. So I went to World Market and I did the random wine game again. Now, World Market was a little different to do this because it wasn't like I had one aisle separated by whites and reds like H-E-B. I just kind of stood there and I just went, okay, I looked at signs. So they had a sign that said, France and then Italy and Spain and then they had other signs above like little sections, you know, about, you know, bold and fruity and sweet and whatever. And then they had varietal signs. So I just kind of counted and I had around 30 of them. So I just said, okay, so let's, let's do a randomization. So this one was, this is the Mezzo Corona. So I think this was number 26 for the section. And then I, I had a choice of four wines and this was wine number two. Well, I think a choice of three wines. So I had the random number generator go from one to three and it kept number two. So this is the Mezza Corona 2011 Pinot Noir. This is from the Dolomites or Vignette delle Dolomiti. Vignette delle Dolomiti. Um, so Italy. Um, so it is an IGT Dolomite, right? Is that what it says on here? Well, yeah. Um, so the Dolomites are in the northeastern part of Italy, uh, near Trentino, uh, Bel, Belluno, and South Tyrol. Yeah, that one doesn't, have, doesn't roll off as well as Belluno, okay? <laughs> but anyway, as you realize that this part of Italy has kind of, it's kind of like Alsace in France, where it's French and German and kind of, you know, mishmash. Well, this part of Italy is kind of Italian on Austrian and maybe a little bit of Swiss involved. But um, so anyway, so, so city names and wine names and grape names and all that good stuff. So anyway, so Pinot Noir from Italy. Yeah. You know, and, and, and on their website, <clears throat> first of all, Mezza Corona is pretty big winery. I mean, you know, they're, they've been around for 
over 100 years, by the way, since 1904 they were founded. But they, they, the, the name, as far as what I've seen in the United States, been around for a long time. They produce a lot of value wines. Uh, bought this wine, again, like I said, at World Market for, uh, the price is normally $9.99, but because I'm the Explorer program, whatever they call it, I got it for $7.99. So $10 bottle of wine. Um, the, the winery is at the foot of the Dolomite Mountains. Their vineyards are all in that area. Um, and the Dolomites, like I said, are shared by the provinces of Trentino, South Tyrol, and Belluno. That just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Anyway, um, so yeah, Pinot Noir from Italy. And like I said, the website said that, you know, Pinot Noir is grown outside of France and California and Oregon. It's not just, you know, those three areas. It's just that those are the three areas that people really associate Pinot Noir with. You can grow Pinot Noir in many different areas. It is a finicky grape. Do you guys remember the April 1st last year? On April 1st, I released this press release that had Loki Pinot Noir from the uh, Rogue Valley in Oregon. Yeah. You know, look it up on the website. Hit the website, type in Loki. And I mean, it was a fake thing, but I thought it was really creative. I thought I liked it. I mean, it only took me about 10 minutes to really come up with most of it, but uh, last second, by the way, for an April Fool's joke. No, no, I didn't do any this year. Um, so Pinot Noir, um, I've had non-traditional Italian grapes from Italy and, you know, with uh, mostly success. So let's try this out. Oh, since I actually have color on this wine, let's see if we can get some color. Now this, interesting enough, okay, so when we're taught to use descriptors for, for, for colors, we're told not to use the word brick red because a brick can be any color almost. But when you think of that, that almost rusty type of brick, that's what I get. It's actually kind of orangey. Now, again, these lights may not be giving me the proper, the proper lighting, but even when I put my hand behind it, it does kind of have an orangish tint tint, like a red orange tint. So that's interesting. So it's almost rusty, almost, almost a little bit rusty. It almost looks dirty. Like it's like kind of like dirty water. So it's got a little brown to it too. A little brown, a little orange, a little red. Interesting, but very thin. Okay. Did you all catch that Darth Vader is running for like president of the Ukraine? I'm not trying to do anything about Ukraine and, and Russia. It was just, that reminded me. Whatever. All right, so um, let's get into the wine. Almost like a cherry Pop-Tart. Yeah, I mean, it really is. I, I mean, there's a bit, of a bit of cherry to it. Almost like a cherry pastry. I don't get any earth. I don't get any wood. I really don't get any floral. Let's see if we can intensify it here. No, just more cherry. And more cherry rather than like cherry pastry. Right, let's check it out. Now that I spit it out, I really now get more of it. When I was swirling my mouth, I didn't get a whole lot. I was kind of like, eh, it's all right. Um, I get a good tartness out of it, like a good sour cherry. More like, more like sour cherry candy. So while the initial aroma I was getting that kind of pop tart or pastry with, with cherry in it, um, now I'm getting kind of the sour cherry. Um, I like it. I mean, it's... It's pretty much just kind of a sour cherry. I don't get really any anything else out of it. I don't. I definitely wouldn't confuse this with a with a burgundy, um, because I wouldn't expect this, like the Spanish Inquisition. Um, 
I probably would think it's California, but I would also kind of go, and I don't think it's really California either. So um, it's not bad. I'm just kind of like, hmm, interesting. And a lot of times interesting means you don't like it when you say that, but I kind of, it is interesting. It's kind of like, hmm, I kind of need to decide where I am on this and it's, I don't dislike it at all, but it's just kind of like, hmm. And just like a lot of wines, especially red, it's getting better now that I've had another sip on this. Um, especially with red wines, like that first pour out of the bottle sometimes isn't the best representation of the bottle. So, because it has to, I mean, if these, these bottles were open for a little bit, but you got to get that first thing out and then you kind of get to the real wine. Okay. So now... It doesn't smell so much like a cherry Pop-Tart. Now it actually smells, it smells more, I don't want to say complex, but it smells better in, in the sense like it smells like it's a better quality. I still get the cherry, but it's, it's more subtle. I thought I got a little bit of wood on it. So, I mean, it really is, it's kind of toned down a little bit. Got cherry, a little bit of wood to it, still on the palate. Um, good acidity, like it's pretty acidic too. And even on the first first pour, it was pretty acidic, but it feels a little more acidic now. Really, really making the mouth water. I'll call this medium plus at least on the acid. Um, very low on tannin. So this is, you know, it it it, it saw skin contact just enough to give it some color. Um, it's a good wine. I mean, it's a good ten dollar bottle of wine. Um, I don't think it's uh, earth shattering, but I also don't think it's swill. And that doesn't really give you a good ringing endorsement, does it? You know what? Here's the deal. It's 10 bucks or eight bucks or whatever. It's an Italian Pinot Noir. It doesn't taste like a Burgundy. It really doesn't taste like a California wine. It does taste like someplace else um, because it is from someplace else and it should taste like someplace else. And that's the good thing. That's why I call it interesting because it's kind of like, hmm, I haven't had this exact type of Pinot Noir before. Now, I don't dislike it at all. Um, I'm not head over heels in love with it, but I definitely would probably like to explore more Pinot Noir from this area, uh, from a different producer, whether it's $10 or $20 or $50. Um, I would like to explore more of that if I see it. And this is a wine. As I drink more of it, I tend to like it better. Now, the first two wines they did tonight, I didn't really talk about food pairings because they were just kind of like good just drinking wines. This wine probably would benefit from a little bit of food action, but it's a, such a, it's a very light wine, so you don't want to overpower it with the food. Um, you know, honestly, I think a salami would probably go good with this, like a, like a little meat plate, meat and cheese plate. I think it would go really well with this. Probably make it taste even better. So, like I said, it's 10 bucks, Italian Pinot Noir. Check it out. Um, you might like it. It, it. Again, it doesn't taste like Burgundy, really. It doesn't taste like California or Oregon. Um, it tastes like something different, and uh, but it still has the characteristics of a Pinot Noir. So check it out. All right, so um, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Now, again, like I said, the links are on the website for episode 300. Make sure you hit that. Um, hopefully you can show up. Uh, I, as always, let's just wrap it up. As always, I want to thank you all for stopping by uh, for 298 episodes and counting still. From me up above, hit the donate button over here. Um, watch me online on April 28th or come by Max's Wine Dive uh, on April 28th so we can do episode 300. And um, we will see everybody again next time. <laughs>